This video is to show you how to make a seatbelt repair on a 1996 Chrysler Sebring JXI convertible. The seatbelt in my cars would not retract from their holder. That's because the inertia module for the seatbelt was uh, broken. On the convertible, this repair is unique because there's only one control module for both seatbelts. That inertia module actually sits below the center console in the center of the car. For a uh, Sebring Coupe it's a little different. There's actually two uh, modules. One is in each pillar of the car where you'd normally have a pillar here. You don't have that in the convertible but in the um, Coupe there's one control module for each seat belt in this pillar. All the tools you need for this repair are right here. A Phillips head screwdriver and an Allen wrench. This is actually the module you're going to repair. And that top number is the correct part number. And it should read P O four six seven one three zero zero A B. That is the correct part number. Uh, now, when you go to the dealer, they'll pull up that part number on their screen. It'll come up as seat belt. Well, that's short for electronic seat belt module. And that's what you're going to replace. The part was one hundred and seventy-five dollars from the Chrysler dealer. I saw them online for one hundred and sixty. So this is a pretty easy repair to remove this console first. Actually, I removed this arm just to get it out of my way. I figured if I didn't, I'd end up breaking it. It's simple. There's four Phillips screws right here that you're going to take out. One, two, three, four. The entire arm comes out. Um, for the removal of the console, there's some screws in here you're going to remove. All Phillips heads. One here, one here, and there's one on this side here in the corner as well. So you're going to take those out. Next thing you're going to do is come up front and you're going to remove this little tab. There's a Phillips head screwdriver underneath there you're going to remove. You're going to pry this up and there's a Phillips head screwdriver right down there you're going to remove. Now I actually forgot to remove mine. I ended up breaking it off. I was pulling the console up. Other than that you're going to take an Allen wrench. You're going to stick in the front of your shifter right here. There's an Allen screw you're going to unscrew and then the shifter just pulls right off. And you can see right here in the front where the Allen head screw is right there. Okay. Once you get that off you're going to set it aside. Okay. Then it's pretty simple. So going to get in the car. What you're going to do next is you're going to reach down on each side of your console. This side and the right side both. You're going to spread it apart at the same time and kind of pull it up. Once you see it pull up, it pulls up pretty easy. You're going to take the back, you're going to pull this up nice and easy, okay? And what you're going to see is this console sits right in here, it bolts down in two places, okay? And basically there's that little yellow, this guy here, basically plugs into the back, this guy here. So plug into the back of this guy here, and this guy bolts down to where you said remove the two nuts, here and here. So this sits right in here once it's bolted down, and it plugs in with that yellow little plug. Now obviously the car would drive without it. I drove my car waiting for the part to come in. I didn't have any seatbelts when it was broken so I had no seatbelt when I took it out. But the car will drive with it. So simply just going to screw this back in place. I got my, I put my nuts here so I'd save them. You take these two off, plug this in, put this back down in place, screw the bolts down, and you're in good shape. And just put your console back together. It should be all up and running. So that's pretty simple. Uh, good luck. I posted this video because I've used uh, YouTube several times to find repairs for my Sebring as well as uh, my motor scooter. So good luck. I think it's a pretty straightforward repair. Um, you won't see this in any owner's manual or you won't see it in the um, standard repair manuals you'll find at Advanced Auto. I actually looked. Uh, I only know about it because um, I had the same problem I first bought the car in about 2000 and the dealer talked to me about uh, what the problem was. That's how I knew where to look. 
So good luck and uh, take care. Bye.